Hey, everyone. I'm sorry. I just um, got caught out. So hopefully you're still here. All right. So um, as I was telling you, I'm going to show you how to create a pin graphic for Canva. So just let me know if you can hear me and all that. There's something going wonky with what I'm using um, this tool. So I actually have a new microphone um, and I am using the same uh, video tool as I've been using for the last six months or so. So I just want to know that um, you guys are actually seeing me and let me just go to the, the group here. All right, so I do look like I think I'm still live, which is good. So hopefully this won't cut out. Um, as I was saying, you can get some free stock photos. If you go to twinsmommy.com and search just 35 or free stock photos, you'll get to this blog post. And I've curated a lot of uh, free places to get stock photos. Um, they're primarily more for um, like, they're a bit girly, more feminine, but I like them a lot. So um, I know Color Your Bold, I was saying, has 50 free photos that you can grab. And I actually have a subscription to her because her photos were really awesome. And there's some great ones. Otili, I really like. Boss Latina has some great ones. Um, another great one is Rakita Nicole. She has a lot of um, free stock photos that she'll give you every month. So make sure to hit that. All right. So let's go and dive into Canva. Now, um, I use Canva, as you can see, I use Canva for certain things, mostly for um, creating my YouTube thumbnail graphics for my YouTube channel. I create also um, social media graphics for Facebook. So this was my latest one over here. And, um, and I have another one right here. And I sometimes use it to make uh, freebies as well as infographics right here. And I use this for all the other blogs that I have as well. All right, so... Let me just, all right, so when you're creating your pin using Canva, um, you can use the recommended pin size that Canva has, which I believe is something like 735, yeah, 735 by 1102. Um, I personally use 600 by 900 or 600 by 1200, sometimes 1260. Ideally, you wanna have a two to three ratio for your pin graphic. But I've been playing around with different sizes. And I found that even if I have a, a six by 900, or a six by 1200, or even a six by 1260, I'm still getting a lot of impressions and click throughs on that. So um, play around. Um, um, that's my biggest uh, tip, play around with different sizes to see what is resonating with your audience and what is taking off on Pinterest. Right now, Pinterest is um loving fresh content, fresh pins. So I would try different um, off-brand pins, different sizes, a lot of different um, tactics to see what is picking up so that you can start um, getting those click-throughs. All right. Hi. So just say hi if you're here. I got cut off last time, so I'm kind of a little bit nervous now if it's going to not cut off me again. Um, feel free to ask me questions during this tutorial about Pinterest marketing. Um, I don't see any right now, so let's get to it. So I'm gonna make a custom pin graphic with, uh, as I was saying, 600 by 900 today. Okay, so with Canva, when you sign up, if you can use zero templates behind here, or you can just create a custom dimension. So that's the easiest thing for me. Oh, sorry, I'm not showing you. Um, so right here, you can create the um, templates. Right here, you can use the Pinterest template or you can just create your custom one. And so I'm gonna do custom. And that's 600 by 900 right here, okay? If you have any stock photos, so like I said, if you go to my Twins Mommy post, you can get some free stock photos. You can just upload them to Pinterest right here. Okay, just drag and drop. Um, so I'm just gonna use one of these to create a pin. Now, the type of image that you use, is, um, I've been playing around with different images, but what I've noticed, the ones that are taking off quickly are ones that have a lot of white space around it that are defining. So there's 
there's not a lot to look at in your image. So there's not a lot of pieces, objects, things in your image. Um, I don't use a lot of faces. And if I do use faces, they're covered. So um, for example, you know, this photo has, the, you don't see the girl's eyes. Okay. Um, that's just most of the photos that I do. Most of them, not all of them. Now, for example, for Imperfectly Perfect Mama, I do use more faces. But for Imperfectly Perfect Mama, I'm using stock photos, actually. So it's a little bit of a different strategy that I'm doing on Imperfectly Perfect Mama. Um, but generally, what I'm finding is that pins that have um, partial faces do well. Pins that are warm, so warm colors, do well. Um, and that have a lot of white space, okay? You can add color, like a pop of color to your pin, okay? Um, Let's play around with this pen and see. I sometimes use color in the pen just as it pops out on your feed. It can work. With Pinterest, you can just drag your image there and you can angle it and rotate it. So one of the things that I've learned with Pinterest is that since Pinterest is used by a lot of people, a lot of content creators, we're using a lot of the same type of photos. So you need to angle your photo a little bit differently, change it a little bit um, so that Pinterest sees that as a new pin with a new image on it. Okay, so I'm just going to play around with the angle here so that I can make sure that I'm capturing a sort of new angle. All right, so I'm still thinking that's too big. I'm going to angle it here, maybe like that. And I'm just going to bust it out just a bit bigger to cover the pin. You know what? I'm going to do it like this. Okay. So the image is getting too big for me, but what I can do is angle it like so. Okay. And you can play around with all of this to see what works. So, um, okay. Let's do that. Now there's all this wonky stuff here. I'm going to cover that. So if you go to elements, go to shapes, you can add um, different elements to this. So I'm going to add just so sort of like a top, make it a little bit top heavy here. There. Okay. Oh, almost showing. Okay. So that's sort of the basic of my pin. On Pinterest, like I said, I've been playing around. Um, so if you go to my profile, and if you look at my pins, you can see that I do different types of um, pin. So I've been doing a lot of like this type where I have a picture and then um, like a big block of color here with a title. So I have something like that. I've been playing around with doing that. And here's another one like that as well. Um, the other type of pin that I like to do now, and here's another one, is um, just doing a bar across a certain phrase. Okay, so there's that as well. I can show you that as well if you want. Okay. So with your colors, you can pick on brown colors or off brown colors. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna. I'm going to do a little bit of the pink here. Let's see. Oops. I'm going to just play around, try and get the color similar there. Okay. So something like that. Okay. And let me just, so hope everyone's with me right now. Um, and from here is where you need to design your headline. Now with your headline, I want to make sure that um, in order for me to see it on my phone or on my feed, it needs to um, pop out for me. So that might mean using a bigger font. So making your font big to read. It also means that there's a lot of spacing around your words. And it might mean using different colors or um, different fonts if you want to play around with a font. Um, like a like a script font, like a fancy font, um, to play around with that. So, like if we go to here, I do play around with one word, 
with a script font, but sometimes I don't like this one has no, it's just a, you know, a basic font here. Um, so you can play around with that. I find that if you use too many words with a, with the same font, it's hard to read if I'm scrolling fast. So make sure you use like one word, like that's easy to read for me, you know, versus one that might have multiple words with a fancy font. So, um, just be mindful of that when people are scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, what is catching their eye. All right. Okay. So then with text, you click on here, you can add a, head a heading and you can move it up right here. And as I was saying, with the heading, I find that if you're a bit more personal with your heading on Pinterest, that seems to get more click throughs. So how I made, you know, 27,000 last month or how I use my bullet journal to maximize my time as a mom. Um, those types of, of headlines attracted me when I first started using Pinterest. I wanted to know, well, how did they do that? What was their secret? Um, using the word secret also is enticing. So, you know, 10 secrets to a, you know, fantastic morning routine or um, 10, uh, find the secret to having the perfect um, meal plan that your family loves, you know, things like that. All right. So um, I'm just going to do something with, I think, bullet journaling. So um, also using the best seems to work. Um, duh. And I'm going to make, actually, I'm going to make each line a new text box. So I'm going to add another heading so I can play around and have a bit more customization on Canva if you use separate text boxes. The best. And then what I like to do is I like to click on one of these and then copy it. So I can copy it and then I can just use that box again. So the best, the bullet journal might be a, um, might be a fancy font, bullet journal. So let's make that that's a nice font here. I don't know if you can, you can read that. Let's see. That's nice and everything, but the font on that script font is a little bit too thin for me. So I'm going to pick a different one. I'm really liking, what was the one? That one is a bit thicker. Okay. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Cause that's, I want people to read that word. I'm going to make it a different color. Let's try and let's use white and let's change this font to I'm going to use a sans serif font for most of the words here so I'm just going to pick I think open sans yeah open sans for that and we'll do open sans for this one too all right, so we're getting the basics here. I want best to be bolded. I want this one to be a little bit bigger. Okay. I can even make it a little bit bigger too and play around with that. Best bullet journal. Looking good, okay. And then we're going to call it, um, let's just be different here and call it for uh, college students for college students. There we go. Okay. 
So that's sort of the basic of a pin. Um, I like to play around, like I said, using different um, text boxes so I can have a bit more customization. I like to preference one word with script font, make it a different color. I sometimes like to add arrows too. So you can have fun if you can, you can go and search for arrows and that sort of just helps attract a reader's eye. Although these arrows are sometimes a little bit too big, too thick. Um, can't really make it. Oopsie. Come up here. Maybe do something like if I move the over here, I can angle the. Move best up here. Change this color to black. And then do something like that as well. And make this just a tad bigger. All right, so the last thing you want to do with your pin here is you want to create your branding. So I just like to do my website name. So twinsmommy.com. Put it down at the bottom. And make it just a slightly bigger here. There we go. There, so that's the basic of a pin on Pinterest. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me go. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay. So that's how I use Canva. Um, to make a pin. I download it and then I can put it on my blog and then upload it to Pinterest from there. Um, I try to make a pin um, if I can every day or at least a couple times a week and I can use um, old blog posts or any new blog posts that I've created during that week as well to make a, a pin. All right, so just as a reminder, you can take a look at this. I'll put the link in the comments, but if you go to this blog post, you can get a lot of free stock photos for your pins. Um, as a recap, a lot of people are using these free, free stock photos, so make sure to angle them. Um, you can even add a filter if you wanted to, to see if that changes it just a bit, like that makes it green instead. So there, that's a bit more unique. All right. So um, you want to angle it differently, size it differently so that Pinterest doesn't view that as a, the same pin on all the other pins. Okay. So, um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I'm here for a few more minutes. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just checking real quickly. All right, everyone. So I don't want to keep you any, any later than you are, but, um, I lost my description on this other one, but I just wanted to let you know quickly that, um, I do have a free, no, I'm sorry. It's not a free, well, I have my free pin promote planner that can help you get traction. So Pinterest traffic, but I also created a new masterclass, um, about helping you create content that's specifically to help you drive traffic for your blog. All right. So I'll drop the link on that. Um, it's, uh, it's just a masterclass, a couple videos couple hours for the weekend you can take and um, learn how to create that optimized content and that optimized blog post so that that pin grabs a reader on Pinterest, goes to your blog, and then how do you get them to stay on your blog longer to help you grow your traffic? All right. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.